Dr. Ken here we're with you. DC lesson number two, part A. So we're looking at voltage sources and effects of an electrical current. So this lesson is going to be all about um, how electrical energy is produced from other sources of energy. So we're using um, textbook by Phillips, Electrical Principles, and this is section 2.1 from which around the textbook we build the lesson. So the first thing is producing a voltage or an EMF. Electrical energy is produced by converting other forms of energy, and those electrical sources are mechanical, which is the main one. We tend to can take um, some kind of energy form, heat something up and drive a turbine of some kind, whether it be steam or gas, to drive a generator. And that's mechanical energy. We use chemical energy, um, typically more in the form of storage, and that's batteries. And heat, of course, um, we, we don't use heat directly, we use heat indirectly. There are a couple, one application where you can use heat. And of course, growing these days is the use of light or PV, but still low usage, but growing. So producing a voltage, we normally have some kind of um, energy stored in some kind of form. And I'll just turn my pointer on. So we normally have an energy source of some kind, most typically mechanical. Um, electrical energy has to be stored either in the form of mechanical energy, chemical energy, and even radiant energy. Then we turn it into electrical energy using um, some kind of generator. So in here we have a generator and then we get electrical energy which then we transmit throughout the state and then the energy eventually gets to the end user and we convert that electrical energy back into heat, light and often mechanical with rotating machines. So electrical energy is produced by simply converting other forms of electrical energy and then converting it back at the user end. So mechanical to electrical first. There are three ways to convert um, mechanical movement into electrical energy. The first is friction between two materials, and I'm sure you've all had a party balloon where you rub the balloon on particularly a synthetic uh, shirt, and all of a sudden you can make your hair stand on end, or you can pick up small pieces of paper using electrostatic attraction. That is friction. You're literally rubbing electrons off your shirt onto the rubber of the balloon. Mechanical stress applied to piezoelectric elements and the very microphone I'm using to record this lesson uses that feature. And moving a conductor in a magnetic field is the third one and is the very large one. It's the one we use most of the time. So here you can see a picture of a different friction the first is the Wimhurst machine, and it works by literally rubbing electrons, electrons, I should say, off these little dash things on here onto this brush. And then that energy comes down through the base, and eventually you get enough electron buildup and you get a discharge across the air here between these little spheres. So that's a Wimhurst machine. And you simply rotate the handle and it rotates the wheel, rubbing electrons off. And they build up until eventually you get a discharge. A uh, Van de Graaff machine, very, very similar approach. You're physically wiping um, electrons off a rubber belt. So there is a large rubber belt, which you can't see, running up the inside of this thing. And it's being driven by a little electric motor down here. Or maybe even hand driven, but you've got a little motor of some kind. Driving it around, the belt's moving around. 
and then as the belt rubber rubs off electrons against a little collector at the top here that's connected to these large spheres and when the amount of electrons here gets large enough we get the discharge to ground that you can see here as uh, air is ionizing so that's called a Van de Graaff generator piezoelectrics really interesting one uh, piezoelectrics use um, crystal structure quartz so we have in here just a, a lump of quartz crystal quartz so lump of quartz quite literally in here and if you apply a pressure to the quartz then you're going to get a voltage or a potential across these points but let me tell you it's only millivolts so the microphone that uh, I'm talking to you with is what we call a condenser or piezoelectric microphone and one side of the crystal is fixed the other side is exposed to the air and it's hearing the sound waves as I'm talking and those sound waves are striking the crystal and producing a small EMF here which gets amplified which is my voice so that's how they work and they work in both directions they can be used as a microphone and they can be used as a buzzer we can apply an alternating voltage back and they will actually produce sound back in the opposite direction so you can actually apply an AC signal to it and you'll get a buzzer and that's what you can see here these piezo elements here they're actually mini speakers so piezoelectric effect is where pressure is applied to the opposite forces of various types of crystals and they produce a very small voltage magnetism um, this is the biggie of course so as we move our conductor through our magnetic field a potential is induced and we're going to get a current flow through our conductor so the mechanical movement the mechanical energy here through the field is converted into electrical energy or electrical current and the current you can see flows and if you move the conductor in the opposite direction back up that way of course you'll get current flowing in the opposite direction in the negative so this is our simple alternator and this is how most um, large alternator generators um, work we simply have a rotating magnetic field and it's literally rotating around as the magnetic field cuts the conductors we're going to get a voltage imposed in here we're going to get electrical current flowing through here and once the current gets sufficiently flowing eventually our lamp will turn on as we are effectively converting the rotational mechanical energy into electrical energy by rotating the magnetic field inside our coil so base load generation in uh, in Australia most of our base load is uh, done with steam turbines what we call coal-fired steam turbines so you've normally got fuel being put into here of some kind coal gas whatever the boiler produces lots of heat that heat is converted into steam so that's what's produced in here we're getting steam 
and the steam drives our steam turbines and these then rotate so we're getting a rotational effect out of here so we have a high pressure turbine we reheat some of the leftover steam and have a medium pressure or what they call the inter turbine and then finally we have a low pressure turbine that takes the very very last leftovers of the steam but they're all connected together you can see it's just one big shaft all the way through that eventually turns and our generator produces electricity the leftover steam then gets condensed with a heat exchanger back into water and that water gets fed back to the boiler and away we go and the whole press process repeats itself so our generator here typically generating at about 15 kV and going up through a transformer probably pumping it up to somewhere in the order of 330 kV that we can then transmit throughout the state other practical alternators are wind so here's a typical wind generator and again we have wind energy being applied to the blades we can change the pitch of the blades to determine how much energy is going to get pushed into the gearbox the gearbox then rotates the generator the generator then produces electrical energy which is then uh, put into a transformer I just use the abbreviation TX for transformer and that produces the energy we also have other renewable sources um, these include uh, geothermal so here's a geothermal plant and we're simply taking heat energy from inside the earth's crust we don't do a lot of this in Australia just a little bit so we're taking this heat from the crust hot in the form of hot water it then produces steam drives our steam turbine around the steam turbine in turn turns the generator and the generator produces electricity the steam that's left over gets converted back into water cooled down and pushed back in to replace the hot water that was taken out of the reservoir in the first place so that's geothermal also other renewable uh, energy sources solar we do have solar collectors that um, collect heat and then turn that heat and again drive steam turbines we also have um, solar cells other renewable resources we have particularly in the snowy mountains where I live we have uh, hydroelectric where we're storing water up in the mountains and then using gravity to turn alternators um, wind power that we've already just mentioned biogas uh, moon gas fields in South Australia produce a lot of biogas and we transmit that or pipe that around the country and then at appropriate points put that into gas turbines and produce electricity and the wind power that we've uh, just mentioned we won't go through that again the next one is uh, chemical so this is typically batteries cells um, we'll be looking more closely at different kinds of cells but the basic electric cell has three components the positive electrode the negative electrode and the electrolyte in this particular case our electrolyte is just diluted sulfuric acid our positive electrode is a piece of copper and our negative electrode is a piece of zinc and uh, the chemical reactions between those will produce a small potential difference and therefore some current the one that I did mention earlier going directly from heat to electrical an example of this is the thermocouple but rather than be used as an energy source it's more about uh, it's used as a temperature sensor so a thermocouple is two dissimilar metals bonded together at a point and as you heat that point 
a potential difference is developed between the two dissimilar metals and uh, that's called a thermocouple um, the one that you see on there on the screen at the moment which is a brown and a blue that's a type J thermocouple another common one is the type K thermocouple and uh, a type K thermocouple is very very popular of course if it's a very large range and these are often used in uh, large high temperature furnaces to uh, measure and manage the temperature so light to electrical of course we have solar cells that convert the sun's light energy into electrical energy and of course we'll be looking at diodes shortly because at the end of the day a PV array is just a LED but being used the other way around instead of just passing a current through to make light we're exposing the junction to light and making electricity so reasonably straightforward it's just a diode being used in reverse to make electrical energy so summing up um, lesson 2 part A electrical energy is produced by converting other sources of energy most electrical power is produced by alternators driven by mechanical energy of some kind high voltages can be produced with friction between two materials and we so you can also do that by applying force to piezoelectric materials batteries produce electricity by converting chemical energy into electrical energy and photovoltaic devices such as solar cells produce electricity when they're exposed to light so that brings us to the end of lesson 2 part A I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about some of the different ways we produce electrical energy.